So in terms of the last three to four months, um, one of the key things we've done for Henderson International Income Trust uh, is to issue some long-term debt, um, which will allow us to lock in some of the very low interest rates at the moment um, to, to fund the portfolio for a long time. It's a rel relatively moderate amount, um, but it's still, you know, again, takes advantage of these very low rates. Uh, and that's I think is attractive because the actual yield on the portfolio is significantly above um, the the cost of the debt. So even on the the interest cost, um, you're making quite a nice not quite a nice spread. Um, I think more importantly, what we're seeing is is an enormous uh, variation between kind of different parts of the portfolio. And so we've seen uh, you know what's regarded as our higher quality growth areas have got to very high ratings. Um, and ironically, those were things four or five years ago. These, many of these were stocks that people didn't really want, mm -hmm. such like Microsoft. Um, so we've seen ourselves taking some profit in those areas uh, and taking advantage of the very low valuations elsewhere to add to some other areas. So we've added um, some stocks in Europe, um, and, but we're also seeing that there are some quite cheap areas of the US emerging, um, sometimes within the more cyclical areas. Um, but actually, equally, sometimes it's within you know, some of the more defensive areas as well. So, you know, overall, um, not an enormous change within the portfolio structure, um, but allowing ourselves to give flexibility to take advantage of dislocations in the market if they come. Yeah, f from a, an income point of view, I would say this year we've been very positively and pleasantly surprised by the dividend trends coming from the portfolio and from the markets in general. Uh, we've seen companies generating um, that aren't traditionally associated with generating a lot of cash, such as the oil sectors, generating much more cash than they used to, being much more focused on efficiency. Um, we've seen, in some cases, increased clarity from regulators around financial services. So again, we've seen some significant dividend increases from areas like the US banks, We've seen consistent dividends being paid by the European banks, and, and even though those share prices have been very weak, um, you know nothing within the, the actions of the management teams and the board's decision on dividends suggests that they're concerned. Um, and meanwhile, other areas of the portfolio, like consumer staples um, and, and utilities in those areas, have carried on paying dividends nicely. So, I'd say from the income point of view, the trends have been good across the board. Um, in terms of particular areas um, of the world that are interesting at the moment, um, you know, probably the most unloved areas are Europe, including the UK uh, and Japan. Um, we, we focus more on Europe. I think that's that's not really a reflection of macroeconomics, but more that we tend to see more kind of positive action by European companies to address um, the reasons that they are trading cheaply. So sometimes we're seeing conglomerates kind of spinning themselves out, breaking themselves up um, to try and realise value, or perhaps just to allow part of the business you know, to run better and focus more. So we've got a number of companies like that in Europe that they're in the process of, of realising value. Um, and, and that feels to us that they're a bit more shareholder friendly still than, than Japan, but both areas you know, are very cheap. Yeah, the trade war is um, you know, something that you know, if the industry, the fund management industry, has not had to deal with anything like this for quite a long time. Um, I think there's a perception you know, that it directly affects all parts of all stock markets. And actually, it directly affects a relatively narrow area. So you know, for us, we've generally avoided um, areas like perhaps the automotive industry, where tariffs might get put on and, and there are a lot of products crossing borders. I, I think for areas like um, some of the consumer staples companies, um, telecommunications, and, and even in some cases leisure, in either China or in the US, you're seeing quite good domestic circumstances. You're seeing um, you know, low levels of unemployment. Um, and so actually, you, you know, and you're seeing some, some interesting companies you know, they're growing quite nicely, that don't really get affected by the trade war. So I think it's been, it's been relatively easy to avoid direct impact from, from trade and tariffs. Um, you know, longer term, the bigger question will be whether it affects the macroeconomic. Mm -hmm. And I think from that point of view, what, what we've done is, over the last four months, where we are worried about trade of impacting things, particularly if the share prices have performed well, mm -hmm. we have sold those stocks and focused more on companies that are not directly impacted by the trade wars.